Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Time to cover the new content in NHL 23's Hockey Ultimate Team. Also got word of some updates to how prime times are going to work as we did get a ton of them, a ton of impact ones today. So we'll go over that as well. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so for the most up-to-date news tips and info for NHL 23's Hockey Ultimate Team. All right, let's get into it. So I do want to mention before we get into it, a lot of these Hut 23 items are not really going to be anything to chase after. Uh, they're more for if you have a favorite team or a player that you're interested in. Make sure you guys are always using your favorite players and teams first and foremost. My content is just a guide. It is not what you need to go after and get. I'm just simply here to kind of give you the rundown if these cards are interesting or not if you're looking for uh, a, a gameplay perspective. All right, so we'll start off first. These are the Eastern Conference cards. Yesterday, we got the West. We got Felix Sandstrom, six foot two gold sender from the Philadelphia Flyers at Workhorse and Adventurer. Adventurer might be the most useless superstar ability, but nonetheless, smaller gold centers or guys that aren't six foot eight have been very usable i've been using chesterkin and he's got a 1.4 goals against and an 84 percent save percentage so there's that if you are a flyers fan matthias samuelson earlier in the week secured the bag from the buffalo savers now he secures a hut 23 card item the six foot four 223 pound left-handed defenseman is 80 overall with bouncer as an ability which is low-key a sneaky good superstar ability for defenders he's got 83 speed and 81 acceleration so he is going to be like he's skating in mud his shot is nothing good his hand stats are awful but hey if you're a saber fan Matias Samuelson. Next up from the Detroit Red Wings is Joe Volano, and I feel like we've been waiting for years for him. There was always a lot of hype around him, uh, but now he gets an 80 overall centerman card, six foot one with Magician and Magnetic. Magnetic is more of a World of Chell ability. In Hockey Ultimate Team, unless your offensive awareness is like below 80, which Joe Volano's is, uh, Magnetic is really not going to be something that you need to worry about. Once you get into like the 85 and above for offensive awareness, it really loses its uh, effectiveness. He's got 85 speed and 85 acceleration so if you have bronze or silver cards on your team you might be able to get this joe volano for like 900 950 coins that's the only time i'd be interested in him next up from the new york rangers capo caco who is off to a great start in the season at an unreal preseason after kind of a mediocre playoff run he's got unstoppable force and he's six foot three which is a great combo with light the lamp 85 speed and acceleration light the lamp helps out his wrist shot a little bit as well it is very difficult to knock some of these bigger guys off the puck if you you have someone who knows how to control it well and when combined with unstoppable force it could make this card sneaky good uh, but for any Ranger fan out there, there you go, the 81 Capo Caco. Gustav Forsling from the Florida Panthers gets an 81 overall with Stick 'em Up. Stick 'em Up, guys, is one of the best abilities in the game. I'm going to have a video coming out debuting my lineup of team builder cards. And Steve Duchesne, spoiler alert, has gold Stick 'em Up. And I'm going to show you guys why it is so impactful. 86 speed, 87 acceleration. This is actually kind of a gross 81 overall left handed defenseman. If you guys can get him for bare minimum price and you are, again, using very, very low overalls i would actually go out and get this card if you're just starting new obviously everyone's just starting new in the game but if you're looking for someone to upgrade from those bronze or silver cards gustav forsling is actually half decent from the tampa bay lightning we've got the 81 nick paul six foot four gladiator and unstoppable force much like capo caco only nick paul is extremely slow unless you're a tampa bay lightning fan or an ottawa senator fan uh, this would be an avoid for me. From the Pittsburgh Penguins, Brian Rust gets an 82 overall. He is a right-handed winger with fly the zone, getting his speed up to 88, which is usable. 86 acceleration and mid-80 shooting. This is, again, sneaky usable early on in the game if you are looking for a right-handed winger. Ryan Pollock from the New York Islanders with Thief, which is a very good synergy for defensemen and centermen, uh, as well as shutdown. Again, any of the abilities that help out with Pocek after the nerf this year is are still very, very effective. 84 speed, 84 acceleration is on the slower end, but at launch of the game, this will definitely play. He has got high defensive awareness, and if you get uh, Thief activated on him, this is definitely a usable card for anyone that is trying to find a bottom of the barrel right-handed defenseman. Next, we've got the 82 Boone Jenner, six foot two, 83 speed, 83 acceleration, awfully tough. He does have 79 on the faceoff. 79, 80 is, is kind of where my cutoff would be for centerman, but again, if you are, I don't even know now. If Unless you're, a, unless you're a Blue Jackets fan, I can't talk myself into this one. Jesper Bratt is up next from the New Jersey Devils, and he is definitely a usable 
left-handed winger. 89 speed, 87 acceleration with mid-80s shooting and mid-80s hand stats. Has crease crasher, which might actually be a lot more impactful than in NHL 22, just because of how effective rebound shots are. But again, it's very situational. Jesper Brad is a very good card for the launch of the game, but I'd probably rather have Taylor Hall or uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, one of those two, if they're around the same price. Anthony Mantha is up next in the Washington Capitals. He had a goal last night, six foot five, at 234. Guy is absolutely massive. Uh, 85 speed, 85 acceleration. Uh, he's built like a very, very effective centerman, but does play the wing. A little bit different this year, again, with how it works in cycling and a lot less uh, needing of the fast, really fast players. So Anthony Mantha does have a place, but you definitely want to put him on a line with someone who's extremely fast. Like if you had Matthew Barzal on the other side, then it might be a decent combo. John Tavares checks in at 83 overall and still brutal in the skating department. However, with buzzing, he does get up to 86 speed, 84 agility. Off the rush does not work um, consistently enough to for it to really be effective. John Tavares' shot is pretty good. All of his other stats are half decent, but his body checking and his skating is always very low. However, as a centerman, you don't need to have a burn at center he's got 83 on the draw this is definitely a usable centerman card although i will say i'd rather have the 82 john uh, uh jonathan taves over the john tavares but nick suzuki is up next from the montreal canadians with born leader after getting announced that he is the captain and playing his first game as a captain in that big win against the leafs 88 speed 89 acceleration so definitely a decent skater has an okay shot his hand stats are around 88 overall not going to be able to knock anyone off the puck with that really low body checking but his defensive awareness is okay he does have heart and soul as well so if you activate that it might help out his face-offs just a little bit this is still a very usable card because of his skating then we've got the 83 charlie mcavoy the bruins desperately need him but i mean i guess in the home opener or the opening game of the season for the bruins they they didn't uh, as they look really really good again with bergeron and Krejci returning but nonetheless charlie mcavoy's got elite edges elite edges before um, I used to kind of think it was pointless on a defenseman, but at the point, what I've found, especially using, you know, like Kale McCarr, the guys that have really high agility, those cuts at the line to kind of create space back and forth are is very effective. So having it on a defenseman isn't the worst thing. 87 speed, 86 acceleration is definitely usable at launch of the game. And he's got decent defensive awareness. Again, if you can get him for, you know, like five to 6,000 coins, maybe 10 at the most, just because, you know, defensemen are kind of harder to come by uh, or launch of the game, that's not terrible. Then we've got the 83. Claude Giroux, and he is always one of the more usable cards at launch of the game. If you have Magician activated, it helps out even more, getting his agility to match his acceleration and speed at 88. He's got a mid-80 shot. His hand stats are in the high 80s, low 90s, and he's got 86 on the draw. This is a very impactful centerman. If you are looking for someone and you don't have like an X-Factor or an Icon or one of the team builders, Claude Giroux is probably going to be one of the better cheap centerman options. And then finally, we've got the 83 overall Max Pacioretty from the Carolina Hurricanes with Bombardier and third eye. I'm not a big fan of either of these for uh, a forward with 86 speed, 86 acceleration, mid 80 shot. Just kind of ho hum all over the all over, across the board. But he is six foot two, which is nice. He's a pure winger. Again, there is other left handers I'd rather have like Taylor Hall or Kuznetsov, for example. So uh, this would be a pass for me. All right, onto the prime times and one of the more random cards in terms of attributes that you're gonna see. And European cards or some of the junior cards will end up like this whenever they get uh, a prime time or team of the week. Some Something like that but he's got spark to get his acceleration up to 88 89 agility 93 balance and 86 speed that's a really strong skater across the board here especially for an 80 overall his shot power is at almost 90 but his accuracy is down at 70 which is uh obviously brutal he's got the hands of mike commissaric but decent body checking with spark uh defensive awareness is really bad though and defensive awareness is the attribute that attributes uh how they how well they intercept the puck but if he's like the bare minimum in terms of how cheap he would be like a thousand coins i would definitely give him a run if you are someone that still has bronze or silver cards on the team in fact i might try and get him on my no money spent team to see how he plays that's a really weird stat all across the board then for the montreal canadians we got goal caulfield for his performance against the leafs and man what a couple of shots from him five seven with spark is one of the better skaters at launch of the game 89 speed 92 acceleration has make it snappy his shot 
shot is in the mid 80s hand stats this deking's at 89 the rest is around the mid 80s uh is a very pure winger he's got 74 body checking and that's with spark on there low defensive awareness so he's pure on offense so if there's any montreal canadians fans out there you should be able to get him for pretty cheap and uh could be fun troy terry out there trying to prove that last year was not just a one-off he had a couple goals in that first game against seattle 86 speed 86 acceleration mid to high 80 shooting mid hand stats uh, defensively, he is what he is. Dangle City is one of the new synergies. It's not all that good, in my opinion. Hand-eye is important, but I think it's more important for centermen, not wingers. Uh, it does help out with the slap shot accuracy, though. But uh, he's going to be very, very cheap. There's other options, though, I think. Miko Rantanen gets a prime time for his four-assist night against the Chicago Blackhawks. He's got distributor, which will help his acceleration up a little bit. Shot is in the high 80s. Hand stats are all around 90 as well. This is essentially the left-handed winger version of Leon Dreisaitl and that's not to say it's bad it's just he won't ever create you any separation because he's only 86 speed so that is the one knock on him he might be a little expensive as well because well he's a 85 overall Miko Rantanen so he's a very popular player on the NHL I'm not a big fan of this kind of card I usually like again I think on the wing you want to prioritize speed a little bit especially early on but that's not to say this isn't going to be a very very good card six foot four 216 uh that'll play next up we've got the 85 David Pasternak I still don't know who he pissed off at EA to get an 81 overall agility rating, but he's got 90 speed, 90 acceleration for his four-point night against the Washington Capitals. If you go end-to-end, -end, this is an extremely good card, but he turns like a tugboat. So uh, I'm someone who likes to make the cuts left and right a lot with my wingers. It's still going to be a very, very good card. However, his value is probably going to be impacted because on Friday, this is on Thursday, on Friday, he's going to get his 88 overall master set player for the spotlight event. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't go out and break the bank on this 85 David Pasternak. If you packed him, I'd actually sell him immediately. And then lastly, we've got the 88 Connor McDavid. He was unreal in the big comeback victory against the Vancouver Canucks. He's got light the lamp. 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 94 agility. He is the best card in the game currently. He's got a great shot. He's got almost max hand stats. And defensively, he's good. And he's got 83 on the draw, meaning that you can use him at center. Um, this is the one thing about Connor McDavid cards is that he will receive a lot of them. And it, because there are so many, um, there isn't, it, it's very weird in terms of value. So now that he's got his 88, he's probably going to receive one every week in terms of a prime time. So his X factor is going to keep going up in price. If you are someone that wants to chase his base card and his X factor, that's fine. It's going to cost you about a million pack or million coins in packs to do it. The one thing I will say is that his prime times or his other cards like it are going to be much cheaper and they're just as usable. Like I get that you can upgrade his X factor throughout the year, but again, a million coins, or you can go out and grab uh, his 88 prime time for much less. Also, I would sell him after that he has done an out of pack. So I want to talk about prime times because there is a change this year. Usually prime times would only be in packs and until the next day at 5 p.m. There is a change in prime times this year, and I'll go over that uh, momentarily. So if you look, it will say on the prime time banner, October 17th. So it's running until Monday. What looks to be 5 p.m. Eastern time, sorry, on Monday, they'll be out of packs. That that McDavid is going to still hold his value quite a bit because you can no longer get it. And now obviously he's probably going to receive a, a prime time every single week. But just keep that in mind because once he's out of packs, he's obviously way more sought after because you just can't get him anymore. So, all right, guys. That is going to do it for today's content. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And come check out the live stream, twitch.tv slash no sleeps 12 every single day. I'll see you guys next time.